in this video, I want to go over something that a lot of you have asked me about, which is the application that is shown on the right hand side of my screen, the one shown here. And what is this application useful for? Let's say that I have to do several tasks today. Some of you or most of you have probably a to do list somewhere and you need to keep track of your tasks. I'm going to type O here. It's going to put me on the line below. Just going to name this task one, task two, task three. Notice that here I'm using NeoVim or Vim Motions because this is basically NeoVim running inside of Kitty. If you look here at the top left corner, you're going to notice that you can see Kitty here. And here on the right side, I have all of my different NeoVim plugins that I use for editing Markdown, which makes it very convenient, right? So let's say that I'm working through these tasks today. I completed this one. I marked it as done, this one and this one. I marked the three of them as done really quickly. If I scroll here to the bottom, you're going to notice that the tasks were marked as done. And you can see the date and the time there. I can untoggle them as well. Same thing. I leave them there untoggled. So the overall idea of this application is just for you to take notes or for you to add reminders or for you to keep a list of tasks somewhere that allows you to use the motions and preferably if you can use your own NeoVim configuration. The first time that I created this, I started with Vim. I left NeoVim out, but then I just decided to move to my NeoVim configuration. I'm going to show you in this video how to set it up and what I did to accomplish all this. As you can tell, this is really useful if I'm following videos as well, because it allows me to mark tasks that I'm following in the video as done. I'm going to quit out of Kitty and you're going to notice that when I open it back, it's going to open in that specific position and of that specific size. That is something that I configured in Mac OS and I'm also going to show you how to set that up as well. So if I bring up Kitty, just the terminal itself, it's configured to open that file in that position and in that place. So that's all I need to do. Open Kitty and my Skitty Notes app takes over. Why did I choose this Skitty Notes name? It's just because I was looking for a Sticky Notes app. So I decided to use Skitty, Sticky Notes, Skitty. You get it? So I don't know. It's just a name that came up on the spot. How does this compare to other solutions out there? Apple already has an application. If I look for here, stickies, right? And if I open this, you're going to notice that I can type stuff in here. It works fine, right? You can keep tasks here as well because it does have a way of uh, adding tasks. You can also add markdown headings. If I remember correctly, let's see heading one testing. I don't know how it works, but I remember that you can add tasks here. You can mark them as well. But what is the problem? If you want to navigate in this thing, you have to use arrows, right? So you have to move with arrows to select text. You have to use shifts and arrows, and it just sucks. Once you're used to NeoVim or Vim Motions and you switch to an application like this, you tend to suffer a lot. So that's what I'm trying to avoid here. Now I can mark this as done. Notice here that it says synced with iCloud. That happens automatically because of the place in which I store the notes. If I come here to my terminal and let me switch to another TMUX session right now, it's uh, Skitty, this one. And this is the same file that I have on the right. Notice where this file is stored. You can see that at the top of the screen. This is in Apple Cloud Docs, GitHub, Skitty, skittynotes.md. So because I'm storing this in this specific directory, which is a location or which is a directory that I sync with iCloud, if I open that same directory in another computer and I'm also logged into iCloud, the notes are going to be synced. So if in this file, I open Finder, I have a key map leader F capital O. Notice that Finder was open. And you can see here at the very top that this is in mobile documents, iCloud Drive, GitHub, Skitty. So that's why I left here that it's synced with iCloud. So let me mark this task as done. And now I'm going to take you through the configuration. If I come here to my .files latest repo, you're going to notice that I have my kitty.conf file open. This is just a kitty configuration file. Again, you can see the name of each one of the files that I'm working on on this video and in most of my other videos here at the top. So just in case you don't know what I'm working on, look at the path at the top. So what makes all of this possible is the command that you see here. I'm opening a shell in bash and I'm executing the command inside here. First of all, notice that I'm adding this opt homebrew bin to my path or to the path. So that NeoVim is available for this command and that it works, right? So whatever you have NeoVim in the rest of your packages, make sure that you export that here first. Notice that I'm already using a quote here. So that's why I'm escaping this other quote in here. That's why you see this symbol here. And that's why you also see the symbol here. So after that, we're passing an environment variable to NeoVim. We do that with this export command. The environment variable is this NeoVim mode and I'm passing the value skitty. After that, I'm specifying the position in which I want Kitty 
to be opened. And I do that with this script. Notice that I'm calling this script kitty dash EOS that is H. It's just a kitty position. So when this script is executed, it just sets kitty of a specific size and in a specific place. I'm going to open this with Neobyte. If I press GX here, it's going to open it and you won't be able to tell here. This is done with my window manager. I'm on Mac OS. I use Yapai and this is the only thing that it does. It falls under this condition depending on the screen that I'm working on. I put kitty on different places. If I'm working on the laptop, it's this. If I'm creating shorts, it's this. And this is for the computer that I'm on right now. Notice here on the right hand side, this is what sets the position on the screen. And this below is what sets the size of the application. In case that you want to know the position and size of a specific application, notice that I left a command here and you can run this. So you can place kitty where you want it to open first, then run this command and you will get the values that you need. Okay, so let's go back to Ghosty. If you want to know why when I pressed GX on that path, it opened the file in Neovite. I have a video. You will be able to find this video here. I released it six days ago and I explained all of this there. So go and check it out. I'm pretty sure that you're going to love Neovite because it definitely has some use cases. All right, so that's what specifies the position. After specifying the position, the only thing I do here is specify which NeoVim configuration I want to open, which is this NeoBin, which is my setup. And after specifying this NVim app name environment variable, I open the file. Here is the location in iCloud and here is the name of the note, skitty-notes.md. That's just the markdown file that you see here on the right hand side. So this is the command that basically takes care of everything. Now let me show you how I configure NeoVim for this. Let me first search for the init.tool file. And here in this file, you're going to notice at the very top that I set this global variable. I called it NeoVim mode, and it comes from the environment variable NeoVim mode that we passed from Kitty. So this NeoVim mode variable is used everywhere else in NeoVim to deactivate plugins, to activate plugins, depending on the NeoVim mode. At the very bottom of the file, you're going to notice that I left this other delay. Because if I didn't add this, whenever I opened Skitty Notes or Kitty, I would get this message, press enter or type command to continue. I just added a delay there without doing anything for 0.5 seconds. And that basically took care of everything. I'm not sure why that happens, but this is how I fixed it. But if you know why that happens, just let me know down in the comments. Okay, so this is the first file that I modified. Let me show you the rest of the files real quick. I left a note here so that you can find all the files that I modified. So the only thing that you need to do is to search for this. What is in quotes here? I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to type here leader SG to search. I'm going to paste this. And here you will be able to see all the different files in which I modified something. We already looked at the kitty.com file. We already took care of that. This is the same kitty.com file. The init.lua file is what we were looking at right now. So I'm just going to keep going down here a little bit more. This is still the init.lua. Here is image clip. That Lua. Notice here on the right hand side, if the NeoVim mode is skitty, I set this third path to IMG. Otherwise, if I'm not in this skitty mode, I just set the third path to this. So what is this used for then? Let me take a screenshot here real quick. Just going to select this. I'm going to take the screenshot here and I'm going to go to skitty notes and I'm just going to add this image. Let me add it at the very bottom of the file. I don't want to have it at the top. So I'm just going to type here. Alt A is going to paste the image there. Notice that it did paste it. That's a nice thing about this too, that I can view images in the notes if I need to. And let's see where this image was stored. If I open the images, here is the directory IMG. It's because of the condition that I just showed you a minute ago. I want the images to be here only when in this Skitty Notes app. If you want to learn how to view and paste images in NeoVim, I have a video with seven months old, but in this video I teach basically everything that I know about images in NeoVim. Go and check it out. It's a little bit long, but I covered two plugins and I explain everything in detail. So with this, I just want to show you how you can modify plugin configuration depending on this NeoVim mode variable. So you can do different things. Okay, so let's go back here. I'm just going to search for this again. Image clip.lua. This is another option. This just sets the template. Just modified something there depending on the configuration. If we look at this dashboard plugin as well, you're going to notice that I have it disabled. So if the NeoVim mode is skitty, I disable the plugin. And you can see that here. Notice that it's enabled conditionally, only if it's not skitty. The same thing if we scroll up here a little bit more for compiler chat, you're going to notice that it's enabled only conditionally. So if in skitty, I don't need the chat, I disable it. Let's keep scrolling down here a little bit more. Same for Lua line. I don't need Lua line in this configuration, so I just disable it. For the image.nvim plugin, I have some other configurations. Let me open this real quick. You're going to notice here that only render image at cursor. If the NeoVim mode is skitty, I have it set to false. And otherwise, if it's not this mode, it's set to true. And I have some other options configured here as well. If I look for the next words here, same thing for this max height window percentage. I want images to be smaller in skitty. And in my other configuration, I want them to be a little bit higher, right? So if we scroll to the next one, I have this set to
this is the only other file, and this is very important. I would say the most important file that you need to keep in mind, right? So I have two places in which I modified stuff here. First of all, in this condition, if the new event mode is Kitty, I configured some options. These two, I don't remember exactly what they do, but I think these are the ones that disable a bar that shows here at the bottom with some text. I think that is achieved by one of these two. I don't remember exactly which one. I don't need numbers in this configuration because I need all the space that I can get. I don't need relative numbers here. I don't need the sign column as well. And this is very important. The text width, I have it set to 33. I also have wrap set to false, line break set to false. I don't need a color column here in this file as well. And I configured winbar to only show me the name of the file. Notice that that is done here. So for example, if I change to a different file here, notice that I'm using mini.files. I have a really nice video about mini.files, some advanced key maps. You can find the video here. This allows me to copy files from mini.files, create a zip file of a directory, and then share it somewhere else because I copy them to my system clipboard. Or I can share files across NeoBIM instances or different team accessions using mini.files. And there's a lot of stuff that I do in mini.files. If you want to learn more, check this video out. But notice here that if I open a different file, this no headings, for example, you're going to notice at the top on winbar that the file name changed. You can see that here. So I can just quickly jump back to the other file, to the alternate file. I have a key map for that. And what else did I change here? The else is if not the skitty config. This is just for my regular NeoBIM configuration. And at the very bottom, I wanted to change the cursor color as well. So I left this here, we cursor, so that the cursor has the same color here. Notice that is the color that the real terminal uses because I like my cursor to stand out. I like to be able to find it easily. The easiest way that you can test this Skitty Notes app or configuration would be by downloading my configuration Neobin because it's already part of it. So if I come here to Ghosty and if I open mini.files, you're going to notice here, let me go to the left a little bit more. So all of the configuration is part of this Neobin folder or directory. That's where it all lives. The only thing that you would have to do after grabbing this directory is modifying your kitty startup command the way that I showed you. Do you have to use Kitty? No, you can use any other terminal that allows you to set up a startup command. You could use Western there. You could use Rio. The only reason I chose Kitty is because it allows me to view images. I didn't choose Western because I still use Western when I'm not using Ghosty as it's one of my main terminals. But Kitty, I don't use and it allows me to view images. So that's why I chose Kitty. If you want to learn how to get my Neobin configuration, how to download it, how to test it out, I released a video. In this video, you can download multiple configurations or distros and my configuration Neobin is one of them. So in case that you're having issues with this, download my configuration, test it there, and it should work. Okay, so let me mark this as well. As you're able to tell as well, this file and the rest of the files that are inside this Skitty directory are stored in iCloud, so I can sync them between computers, but that's not enough. I also push this repo to GitHub automatically every three minutes. I'm working on an auto push script. If you come to my dot files latest, and if you search here for auto push, this is the one. There's a script in here. There are several things that happen, and there are some things that you need to keep in mind to make this work. If you want me to create a video about this, let me know in the comments as well. But if you don't want to wait, just read through the comments here, follow the instructions, and you won't understand what's going on, and you'll be able to figure it out yourself. Let me show you as well what happens if I switch to a different color scheme. It is automatically applied to this Skitty Notes app. So if I type here, I press C N on my keyboard, I'm going to choose a different color scheme. I'm going to choose this dark puccine. And you're going to notice that several things are going to happen right now that I pressed enter. Skitty restarted, Neobin restarted, the colors changed at the top in Sketchy Bar. You can see that here at the very top of the screen. The colors also changed in Tmux. They changed in NeoVim. They changed in the Skitty Notes app. They changed everywhere. So I can quickly switch between different color schemes. Let's say that I choose this Eldritch Colors. I haven't used this in a while. You're going to notice that the colors change everywhere as well. Not only on my terminal and in NeoVim, but also in Kitty. And it's all automated. So again, let me switch back to my colors, which is the one here. And you're going to notice that a lot of keys are going to press or are going to be pressed by themselves. And the colors are changed everywhere. So just wanted to let you know the color scheme change works with the Skitty Notes app as well. I have a video about this color scheme selector. It's basically a series of scripts that I created that modify the colors everywhere in my system. It's a little bit advanced, so be prepared. And I will probably release an updated version of this and just reorganize the script. But if you want to start, go and check this video out.
Some other thing that I want to show you is that if I restart the Apply, this Skitty Notes app is automatically restarted as well and it's placed in its position. What is Yabai? It's the macOS window manager. Yabai is what allows me to manage my windows, is what allows me to set the terminal transparent. If I wanted other applications like Spotify or the browser to be transparent, I can do it with Yabai as well. If, for example, instead of using it in stacked mode, which is what I like using the most, having a single application on the screen at a time, you can also set it in tiling mode. But tiling mode doesn't make any sense whatsoever, at least to me. I have discussed that many, many times in the past. The only scenario in which I see tiling mode useful is if you're a web developer and you need to have your application on one side and the browser next to it and see the changes in real time. Other than that, having a single application on the screen is more than enough. If you want to know about Yabai, how to set it up, all my different configuration, you already know what to do. Go and check this video out. So I just show you this already. The last item that I have on the list is my dots. Just going to press hyper A K and that is going to take me to my browser. I have a lot of key maps configured. I also have a video about carabiner elements, so just go and search it in my videos. All of the files that we talked about and that we looked at right now are in my dot files. If you like what you find in here, if you like the Skitty Notes app, just make sure that you click here, the star button. I'm at 277 stars already. Everything is in my dot files. My entire macOS configuration, new of them, everything is there for you to just grab and use. So I think that I covered all of the items here in the list. I don't think I needed to cover anything else. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, let me know down in the comments as well. The more you comment, the more you interact with the video, the more you share it, the more YouTube is going to show it to other people. So if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. I hope it was useful. I'll see you in the next video.